What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be covering how we can swap weapons with weapons that are around the map or on the ground, and limit our inventory to a specific number of weapons. So we have two different scenarios here in shooters that we've implemented so far. So the first scenario we implemented was the Doom Weapon Wheel. Now we haven't technically implemented the Weapon Wheel visuals and the ability to select through a Weapon Wheel, but... Basically, you pick up a weapon, it gets added to a specific slot in your inventory, and you can swap through your guns to be able to access the correct weapons that you have. However, you can see now what I've done is I've actually limited myself to two weapons. I can swap between them. So I have the Kingslayer, which is the assault rifle, and the Bruiser, which is the SMG. Okay, I can't switch back to my blaster. Now, if I switch to this blaster, I should lose the assault rifle, and I should have the SMG in the blaster. And this is how I can switch weapons. So this is if you want to have two weapons in your inventory, or however many that you want. You know, maybe I can have five weapons only. But now I can have these specific weapons in my inventory, and I can swap them out for other weapons in the world. There is another component to this that we won't be covering today, and that is actually dropping the weapon on the ground where we left it. That we won't have the ability to do yet because there's quite a bit more we have to set up for that sort of functionality to get it working as intended. However, we'll do all the actual weapon switching and limiting to a specific number of uh, weapon slots today. Let's get started on actually making this work. Now, first things first, if you do want to get caught up with this series, I believe we're on episode 29. I'll leave a link to the iCard right here in the top right corner. This is the link to the entire playlist for all the first-person shooter episodes. So you can get caught up with everything we've done to this point. You can see how we got here and everything going forward to the current time. So it will be updated. So whenever you click on this, you'll be able to see future episodes as well. Otherwise, I'll link you this right here which is the first episode where we went over picking up weapons, which matches more of the Doom style and games like that, where you can pick up one of each type of weapon, and they kind of fill in that weapon wheel in a specific order. Otherwise, let's get started. So we're going to do a lot of the work in code today. In fact, the majority of the work is going to be in the code today. And essentially what we have to do is update our interact function to be a code function as opposed to in the blueprint so that we can do a lot of our logic in here, cast to our specific type, say the thing we're interacting with is a weapon. And then if it is, we want to define the logic, which in this case would be pick it up if we don't have already the maximum amount of weapons. Otherwise, we want to swap with our current weapon that we're holding. So if we switch to our FPS tutorial character.h, or basically our base character.h, what we're going to do today is add a few new functions. So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to add three functions today. So I'm going to add these three right here, all next to each other. doesn't matter where you put them in this file, but I do recommend putting them next to each other because they are all related, especially for this episode. And so I'm making a void interact function. This is a generic interact function. We'll be able to go to more specific functions down the line by simply casting to the type of object that we're interacting with and then doing logic there. You'll actually see an example of this in today's episode. I have drop weapon, which technically, as I said, we are not showing the dropped weapon and actually spawning it back where it should be in the scene and enabling the collision and everything again. But we're still going to be able to call this here and remove it from our inventory. And then swap weapon with another, which is basically the function that handles when we drop the weapon, what do we want to replace this with and at what index. So we have interact with no parameters, drop weapon with an index to drop, and then swap weapon with another, which has the new weapon that we'll be adding to our weapons array, and then the index that we're swapping out. You don't technically need any of these to be blueprint callable right now. However, I just set this up so that they can be if you find a place for it or if you'd like to do it, by all means. I think it could be useful to have these things 
be able to be code and blueprint for specific events and sequences. Like if you have a uh, basically a little story section where a character picks up a gun or something, you may want to actually perform the logic to add that to their inventory. And at that point, you could call it from a specific you know, sequence or a specific point in time. Could be useful. I could definitely see it being used in multiple locations. I've also added this function right here, which is a blueprint implementable event, which basically means that we can call this function in code and the blueprint event will then fire and perform that logic. So before we had all of our logic of interact in the blueprint, and there are some things that I actually want to keep in there for now or for the future, just because I think they're easier. So I've decided to make this interact BP basically to call the interact uh, blueprint addition function or event and we can call it right from our code interact so they fire at the appropriate time all righty with that done let's go check out our functions so first thing we need to update is we need to be able to interact and call our code function now, in our setup player input component, this is where we handle all of our bindings. So when we press a certain button, we want to perform a certain action. Well, in Unreal, in our project settings, an in input, we have this input called interact. This is an action mapping, and I bound it to the E key. All right. So before we were going into our base character BP, and we had this interact section here. Okay, so ignore this part right here, ignore the highlighted nodes. In fact, to make it easier for you, I'll put it up here. And instead, this is what you probably see in your blueprint if you've been following the series. You see our input action interact event here we're grabbing our interaction actor, which is essentially an actor that we are overlapping with that is on the ground or in the area, casting it to a specific type. And if it succeeds, we're going to do the logic for that type. So we were casting the base weapon BP, saying, yes, we've now obtained this because basically we're picking it up. We were disabling the pickup collider because we don't want to have the prompt saying, would you like to equip this weapon or interact with this weapon the entire time, especially once it's already in our hands. We were adding it to our weapons array. Then we were forcing a swap to it. That way we would basically, as soon as we picked it up, we would then swap to that weapon. So that was our primary weapon. And then we were setting the owner of this weapon to be self, which is the character. So we're basically saying the character owns this weapon. Now this is fine for the blueprint version, but I want to do this interact in code. So instead to do this, you have to delete that node, the blueprint or basically the innermost child. So it goes the character class and then our FPS tutorial character class, and then the base character BP in this case. So the base character BP will always override any of the action mapping events that we have if you don't remove them. With that, you can actually get rid of this code altogether if you'd like. I'm going to leave it in here for now. I suggest doing that till you perform this episode and make sure it all looks good. That way you don't just remove things and you end up needing in the future. This is what we're going to be replacing it with, but I'm not going to show this off yet because it's going to make more sense once we go over the code stuff. I just want to let you know that that is what is getting replaced here. We're basically doing everything that was in this section here. Instead of doing it in Blueprint, we're going to do it in code minus these minor things. All right. So in our setup player input component, we now need to add this line here. We did not have this in the past. We need to be able to call our new interact function when the interact key is pressed. The way this works, if you need a refresher, this player input Player input component bind action takes this string. This has to be the exact name of the action mapping or axis mapping in the project settings that I've shown you earlier. This is the type of input that we're giving it, such as pressed. This you don't have to worry about too much for now, but it's basically a reference back to this class because that's what it's binding it on. And this is the function that's going to be called. 
So basically, once this key is pressed, then we're going to perform this function on this actor. Okay. So make sure you add this line to say, yes, we can call the interact function when the interact key is pressed. Now we're going to scroll down and we're going to make these three functions. So the first one that I have is interact. Okay, and here we are. And actually, before we start on the interact logic, we do need one other variable. We had this interaction actor in our blueprint as well. We go to our base character BP interaction actor right here. This was just an actor so that we could determine what type of object the character was standing over or within close enough proximity to interact with. That was also done in the blueprint. Now to do this in code, we're going to need a code variable. We'll actually be removing the blueprint one altogether. So make sure you add this as well. If I scroll back up to my variables, I have a actor pointer here. And as the comment says, this the object or actor to be interacted with upon successful interaction. Okay. Uh, you will want to be able to use this in Blueprint in the future. So make sure that you set the U property to be Blueprint read write and edit anywhere. All right. And now back to the interact function. Basically, we need to see if we have an actor already. This will be null pointer by default. You can set it in the constructor if you'd like, but it is a pointer and it will point to null by default, so it's not required. So if interact actor, so basically if there is an actor to interact with, if there's not, then there's no reason for us to try and go any farther. We have no actor that we can possibly do anything with. If there is, we want to determine what type of actor it could be, because our interaction is going to be different based on what type of actor it is. So if it's a weapon, then we want to do the weapon logic, the logic for interacting with the weapon. So essentially, we do this sort of if statement. If you haven't seen this before, basically, I'm setting up a new variable here saying auto, which is basically just grabbing this type. It's the same thing really as taking a base weapon. Just like that. Basically, this is just a more specific type. It doesn't require you to change anything. Auto will automatically pick the type for you. It's mainly used for if you don't care about the type or if you don't know what type it's going to be, if it could be multiple types. In this case, we're doing a cast, so we know it could be our base weapon. So a good practice would be to put that in. But essentially what we're doing is we're checking to see if this is going to be a valid pointer. The only way we know this is valid is if this cast succeeds. And it can only succeed if this actor is not invalid and it can actually be properly cast to this type. Basically meaning the only way this could ever be valid is if we already have an interaction actor that can be cast to a weapon. In other words, it is a weapon. So we're grabbing that value. Okay, so if this actually succeeds, then we can go into the rest of the logic. And this is the interact weapon logic. So we know, here's where we determine what we want to do with our weapon that we just interacted with. Then here comes the logic for the max number of weapons. Let's add this variable now as well. So you scroll down to your variables. If I could find it, here we go. I have an integer here called max num weapons that I've added this episode. Essentially, this is the maximum amount of weapons the character can hold. It's up to you whether they are unique or not. So if you're going along the lines of the doom weapon wheel, you, uh, you probably want the weapons to be unique, like you can't have two BFGs, for example, it will just add to the ammo that you already have. Say you're playing a game like Apex, you can have two of the same weapon, you could have two Havocs, you could have two R301s. They're not the same weapon, so it's up to you whether they, you want them to be unique or not. That is something you can figure out down the line. But just add a variable here that's going to determine how many weapons the character can hold. I put in the character for now because different characters may be able to hold more weapons than others. 
could also be an upgrade thing. However, if it's a global constant, you could set that up so that all characters can only hold the same amount of weapons. I think most games are like that, but just worth noting. And then you should set the default value for this in the constructor. So up at the very top, I set max number of weapons to be two in this case. Okay, back down to interact. So our next check is to determine if the character already is holding the maximum number of weapons or greater than the maximum number of weapons. If they are, we need to swap this weapon out. Otherwise, we can just add it to our inventory. Say we only have one weapon and we can hold two, there's no reason to try and swap the only weapon that we have with it. We can just pick up the other one. But if we already have two weapons, we have to make a sacrifice and trade out one of the weapons that we have for this new one. So weapons is our weapons array. This stores the data for all the weapons that the character currently has. So if weapons.num, remember that dot num returns the actual number of elements. It doesn't care about uh, indices. So say there are two array elements here, dot num is returning two. It's not returning zero and one, it's returning two elements. So if weapons.num is greater than or equal to max num weapons, we want to swap this weapon out. So we're going to call our new function swap weapon with another. We're going to pass an interact weapon because this is the new weapon that is coming into the character's inventory. And the weapon that we're swapping out is the weapon index. Weapon index is an integer that we've set up a few episodes back that stores the current weapon that we're holding. So essentially we have say a submachine gun and an assault rifle. If the submachine gun has index two, then we can access that and say, this is the weapon that we're currently using. This is basically the currently equipped weapon. It's really the same thing as just knowing what weapon is actively being used by the character, but it's useful because it can also be uh, accessed within the array using this integer. Okay, so we want to pass in the new weapon and the weapon that we're going to be, the weapon index that we're replacing, and then it'll call this function. Let's go over the rest of the interact logic first, and then we'll go over the other two functions. So else, if the weapons.num is less than max num weapons, we can just add it to our inventory. So it's going to be pretty simple. What we're going to do is this. We're going to call weapons.add and pass an interact weapon. Again, weapons is an array of a base weapon. So we're just adding a new weapon to it. When you call the add function on a T array, it returns an integer of the index that was added. We can actually capture this by doing this, int32 index added equals weapons.add. That means we know the index that was added to our array. This is useful because we can then swap directly to that new weapon by the index. Also, quick note, we have this boolean called is obtained. It's not required that you have this. What we added this for was, again, thinking of like Doom, you can pick up weapons and they become present in your weapon wheel. Well, at some points in the story, you may lose the weapon. So we, we were setting is obtained to be false, meaning we couldn't swap to that weapon when switching. It's a very specific case, but it could be very useful down the line. So we set up logic many, many episodes back to cover that. If we are still using that method, then you want to make sure that you set your interact weapon is obtained to be true here because it's added to the player's inventory and they can now cycle to it when changing weapons. More importantly, we need to swap to the next primary weapon using this index that we found from this weapons.add. This means when we pick up the weapon, we automatically are going to pull it out. It's going to be our equipped weapon. Lastly, still within this if statement, if it's a weapon or not, I'm calling interact BP. We may want to call interact BP regardless if it's a weapon or not. However, for now, we only have weapons that we can interact with, so I don't want to assume anything. I don't want to try and confuse us down the road because I'm trying to do too many things with one function. So for now, I'm just calling interact BP if the cast to a weapon succeeds. The rest we can figure out later when we can interact with other objects. All right, now we can cover these other two functions. They're significantly smaller. 
and they're pretty simple. So we had drop weapon and swap weapon with another. Let's do drop weapon first because it's important for swapping anyway. So we have drop weapon and it has an index of the weapon that we want to drop. It's pretty simple how we can actually handle this. All we want to do is we basically want to reset or is obtained. At this point, it's being dropped or it's being stolen from the player due to story elements, whatever. And so the character does not have it obtained anymore. Set that back to false. Literally just do weapons at the index to drop. And then we're going to remove that index entirely. Remove at is the one we want here because we can remove at an index and it will remove it from the T-Array. So weapons.remove at index to drop, and that gets rid of it from the array. If you actually look at this while you're playing, when drop weapon gets called, the, the element is removed from the array entirely. Okay, and let's look at our final function here, which is swap weapon with another. So it has this new weapon that we're adding to our inventory and the index that we're swapping out for it. First thing we need to do is actually drop the current weapon that we have. This is because we don't want to potentially have three weapons at a time by adding this new weapon to our array and then dropping the old weapon. That can get a little bit weird with indices because if we remove a certain index that we're looking at after adding and then removing right away, if we're not careful with it, or if the character is doing some crazy stuff, like somehow if they're able to swap and equip a new weapon at the same time, you would get an index out of bounds error because of the fact that we had a new weapon that was added but then we immediately drop to one after, and that's no good. So instead, if we simply drop the weapon first, then we avoid that issue altogether. We're getting rid of the, the weapon that we currently are holding, index to swap, and then we're adding the new weapon in. I do the same thing that I do above here when we, when we just add the weapon to our inventory. So you could make a function for this logic if you'd like. But basically... I add the new weapon that was passed in, I grab the index for it, I set its data to be obtained as true, and then I call switch to next primary weapon on this index. Now, I haven't changed anything in here, so I won't be covering this today, but switch to next primary weapon is what we've been calling, and basically, we go through our logic, make sure that the weapon is obtained, and if it is, then we call switch weapon, which is actually a blueprint implementable event, and it will set the mesh of the gun or the actual actor that we were accessing depending on your method that you used in prior episodes and the projectiles that spawn from it to be the appropriate type so just a refresher of what that does at this point we have all of our interact logic working in the code but we have to make sure we get rid of the blueprint stuff that i was telling you about otherwise there will be some conflicts also going to do this here as well so this is my old logic. I'm going to actually delete it here because I don't need it anymore. I know it works. And now I'm going to grab my interact BP implementable event that we created. Okay. Once you get this, it'll pop up just like this. And we got to fill out this logic. I'm going to delete this interaction actor now to avoid confusion. There is one other spot that we're using it. You can always right click and find references to determine where it's being used. And you can see it's being used here in the display equip method. So basically once we overlap with an actor and we think that we can equip it, then it was being displayed here. But we have the code one now that works and we don't need the blueprint one anymore. So to avoid confusion in event display equip message here, instead of the interaction actor that was the blueprint actor, I'm just using the code variable that we made called interact actor. That's the difference. Okay, and now since I've removed that node, there's no issues, it compiles fine. So the last thing we have to do is set up our interact BP here. Okay, so we grab our interact actor, get it, we cast it to the appropriate type, which is base weapon BP. Then, what I'm doing is I'm setting the owner on it here. You could set the owner in code as well. However, for any reason, if it's necessary, I like setting it to the base character BP. Since the base character BP has the mesh and everything, if I ever need that in the future, it could be useful. 
So instead of setting in code, I set it here. So quite literally, all we do is drag off this cast here, set owner, the standard one here with the target as actor. That's the target, the new owner, you just drag off of that type self, get a reference to self, and it will set the base character BP as the owner of this interaction actor, which is our gun in this case. Then the last thing we need to do is make sure we disable the pickup collider response channel, uh, response to all channels, excuse me, because we don't want the HUD popping up. So see how it says press E to equip Kingslayer. If I press this, now I'm holding the Kingslayer, but I'm always holding this gun. It's always overlapping with me. So that prompt on the bottom never goes away. It just says press E to equip. So we want to make sure once we have it picked up that we are ignoring it. So I drag off my casted variable here. I grab the pickup collider, or basically the uh, box collision component that is around my actor. You can see them in the stage here. You can see this box is the pickup collider. So once I'm standing within that range, I can pick it up or interact with it. And then I simply drag off of that one final time and type set collision response. I put to all channels because in this case, I can I want it to be ignored by everything. And I just set it to be ignore. At this point, Again, I can come over here and let's click on our base character BP and then scroll down and we can see the weapons array. I have one weapon added by default, which is our blaster. I can pick up the bruiser, for example, and you can see I have the base weapon and the submachine gun. But maybe I wanna have two blasters. So you can see now I have two blasters. I can swap between them. They have different ammo. They're their own independent weapon. Maybe I want an assault rifle and a blaster. And you can see how it's actually changing on the right here to match what I'm holding. And I can only switch between these two. The other ones get removed. Again, we need to actually drop them, re-enable their collider, and uh, spawn them in the right spot, allow them to fall to the ground, and be able to pick them up again. But that's something else. We'll cover that in a separate episode. At this point, we actually have full weapon swapping functionality. We control these weapons completely on their own, independently and they actually work in this little inventory system we have set up. So we're good to go with that, guys. We have the ability to swap weapons completely functional now, and we also have the ability to limit the number of max weapons. We could have three, we could have 10, we could have 100. We could have no max, up to you. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself than the channel than anything else you can do. I really appreciate it. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to my new Patreon members and YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you all so much for the love and support. Thank you for helping me continue these series and always be excited about it week after week. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of the episodes in any of my series, feel free to join the Discord community. I'll be happy to help you out. It's completely free and the link is in the description. All right, guys, and like I said, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.